Are you bored of your modern lens and looking for something with more character? Stay tuned. Today we are looking at the fantastic Leica Summitar 5cm f2 lens. Let's take a look. Hello, welcome back. Matt here. Very special lens for you today. Here I've got it mounted on my Leica M2. So this is how the lens looks collapsed. And this is how the lens looks when the lens is in use. This lens might be the creative tool you need to make your photos more interesting. So what's going to tell you about this amazing lens? This lens was first released in 1939. So this is a seriously old lens. So this is a 5cm f2 Leica lens or 50mm in colour modern speak. The 5cm f2 design followed the Leica Sumar which was released in 1933 and this was then replaced by the Leica Summicron in 1950. All of these lenses are 50mm f2 like a screw mount lenses. I mentioned it's like a screw mount or LTM mount but it's on my Leica M2. You can mount these screw mount lenses onto M mount bodies as I've shown in many of my videos with a simple like M to like a screw mount adapter. I get a lot of questions from you guys asking me what's the best adapter to get. I just use the cheap eBay adapters most of the time. I do have a like a branded one as well that I got with a camera bundle purchase. Most of the cheap adapters work no problems. If the first one doesn't work just try and get a similar one from a different seller and hopefully that will work for you. But normally I have no problems. So as mentioned, like a thread mount. This means it will fit on the like a screw mount cameras, such as the Barnack cameras, which I talk about so much on this channel. Like a three cameras. And it'll also fit cameras like the Canon Model 7 and the Voigtlander Besser L. There's two more examples of cameras I've reviewed in the past. So what can I tell you about this lens? This lens is quite different to many other lenses. It has an f2 to f12.5 aperture and it's a clickless design so great for video but personally I generally prefer clicks. The early copies of this lens such as the one I have were uncoated and you can tell by the front glass you can see it's kind of a white sheen or a white tint where if you buy a later version it should have a blue tint. So blue tint means coated, white tint or no tint means uncoated. You can see from my serial number that it starts with a 5. I believe most of the coated ones start with a 6. So 601000 and later are said to have the, the coating. And before that they should be uncoated. But there's always so many variations with vintage stuff. Old ones might be coated and vice versa. One other big difference between the older version and the modern version the older version is a 10 blade aperture and the later version I believe is a 6 blade aperture. Why does that matter? The more blades you have it means you have round bokeh balls almost at every f-stop whereas if you only have a 6 blade aperture you get these really horrible kind of hexagonal bokeh shapes. Maybe you like them but I tend not to like them. So if you're looking to buy this lens by the end of this video try to get the older version 10 blade design. If the seller is not telling you look at the serial number or just ask him is it a 10 blade or a 6 blade. There's a chance that you might prefer a coated lens. Coated lenses generally have better flare resistance and higher contrast. That said uncoated lenses have the opposite effect so lower contrast meaning it helps give kind of a really nice vintage look especially if you mount this on a digital camera and you're trying to get something different. This lens will give you something different that's why it's so amazing in my view. So, so far I'm full of praise. Is there anything bad about this lens? Yes, one negative with this lens, it has a really weird filter thread. I don't know if you can see, but because of the design of the front element, you need a conical filter. Kind of it goes in like that and then threaded rather than just a standard filter. I can't just attach a standard filter, whether it's 39mm or 40mm in the current form. Like I did make a snoo adapter, I write it on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. And that adapter will then allow you to mount standard 39mm filters which is really useful. I don't have that adapter but I'll try and pick one up at some point. Because it has got such a strained design it's quite difficult to get lens caps to fit. I often use cheap eBay lens caps on many of my lenses and this 39mm lens cap just pops off and won't stay on. And then if you get kind of a generic push on cap they fall off. <laughs> So it is a bit of a pain in that front. I don't know if you can see the 10 aperture blades that I mentioned, but it's really nice that it keeps a circle throughout. 
Also with this being a strange size, you need a special lens hood. Or as I say, get the adapter and then use a screw on 39mm hood. I only use hoods when absolutely have to. And I would expect to have to use a hood with a lens like this being an uncoated lens. And that brings me on to the look of this lens. In terms of flare, my copy doesn't really flare too badly. And so, so far I've never really seen a need to use a lens hood. I'm sure if I shot it in the right conditions, I'd see some lens flare. But it's definitely much better than something like the Canon 50mm 1.4 LTM lens. If you didn't see that video, I can link it below. But that has crazy kind of circular flare shooting at the light. From my experience, this lens has been much better in terms of flare resistance. In terms of vignetting being a fast lens, you can have a bit of fall off and kind of dark near the corners. If you shoot this lens wide open f2, and then it's normally gone from kind of f5.6 onwards. I personally like the darkening of the corners and I actually add vignetting in all my Mr. Leica presets. So one important aspect for me is, is this lens sharp? This lens is probably a lot sharper than you may think. If you saw my sharpest 50mm lens video, again, I can link it below. I was talking mainly about the Leica Almar 5cm f3.5. I was then comparing that lens to other lenses, and this lens performs extremely well, especially at kind of f3.2 and onwards. If you shoot it at f2, you get this amazing kind of glow look, and that will give you the most character. On film, I often shoot it at f2.2, just to give me that little bit more sharpness. Then if I want a really nice combination of sharp yet character i'll shoot it at f3.2 here you can see how sharp this lens is at f3.2 shooting it on film doing a few of my selfie tests to test the lens just to talk around this photo one question you might have if you are a like a thread mount lens shooter you might ask how did i focus so closely i actually mounted this lens on a nookie hessem adapter and then you can focus much closer than the the one meter close focus distance, which this lens is designed to do. If what I just said to you sounded like I was speaking a foreign language, feel free to watch my Leica close focus lens adapter video, and that'll give you a better understanding of what I'm talking about. And then the really strong point for this lens, bokeh. This lens is absolutely amazing in the bokeh department. If you're using the 10 blade design that I use, I actually bought this lens after testing the Leica Thambar 90mm lens from the Leica store in the UK. And that gave me a real taste for kind of super soft vintagey look photos but also that lens is really expensive so i did some kind of research and found that this lens can give a, a very slightly similar look if you shoot it wide open in terms of really interesting bokeh and kind of a really nice kind of glow look um, i'll break up an example it's easier than me trying to butcher it in my descriptive words so this photo is shot at f2 and then you can see the background looks like it's been painted on by some famous painter of yesteryear. In my mind, it just creates such a beautiful background in this example. I said it's really nice and sharp at f3.2, but when it comes to digital, I always shoot this lens wide open at f2. If you shoot female portraits the same as me, this is an absolutely fantastic lens for female portraits, especially if you enjoy that kind of vintage classic look. As mentioned in my Canon 50 1.4 LTM lens video, I use this lens and the Canon lens as kind of a pair for most of my female sensual type portraits where they tend to be more skin on show and you want a artistic representation of the model in front of you. This is a really, really strong performer and I would argue it's even better than the Canon. The Canon 50mm 1.4 screw mount lens is sharper at f2 but this has got a lot more character at f2. Just something to be aware of if you're balancing sharpness and character. Also with this lens being a collapsible lens design, it gives you a much smaller setup when it's on the camera than say the Canon 51.4, which is a bit of a chunky lens in like a thread mount lens terms. And how's it perform in terms of colors? I have to put my hand up and kind of apologize and say, I shoot this lens in black and white. So I'm not really sure how it performs in terms of color because this lens is so strong at black and white and that classic look that I keep talking about that I've never seen the need to shoot in color. If you're looking to buy this lens, your best bet, as with anything that you probably buy online, try and watch every video made on YouTube talking about this lens and then take kind of bits of information from each video to get kind of a balanced argument of whether or not this is a good lens. I have seen some negative remarks about the bokeh of the later lens, which has got the six blade design, but in my experience, the 10 blade is fantastic. And with that said, hopefully someone else has covered the, the color aspect of this lens. And the question is, can I recommend this lens? There's a chance you probably already know the answer from the big grin on my face, but yes, this is an absolutely stunning lens. I have quite a few like M-mount lenses and like a screw-mount lenses. 
This is like a screw mount lens number six, by the way. And I think I've reviewed 25 like M out lenses so far. Of all of those lenses I've mentioned, if you're looking for character, the best lenses I've probably got for character are the Leica Summitar, this lens, the Leica Summarit vintage version, which is the 50mm 1.5 M out lens, which I've already done a video on in the past. I actually need to clean my lens and then I might give it another video because mine's got haze inside which kind of limits its use currently. So the Leica Summerit, Leica Summitar, Canon 50 1.4, screw mount lens. Those are the three of my favourites currently. I've got a pile of lenses not yet tested so there may be some more favourites coming through in the pipeline in future videos. But currently and over the last kind of 6, 9, 12 months this is an absolute stunning lens and one of my favourites. Definitely a keeper if you can get a good one. That brings me on to what to look out for if buying this lens. If you didn't watch my video called something like tips and tricks if you buy on eBay, I definitely recommend you watch that if you're looking to buy vintage lenses. The image quality that you'll get from your vintage lens 100% depends on the condition of that individual copy of that lens. We're obviously talking about really old lenses here, as I say 1930s. So there's a great chance between 1939 and, and 2021 when making this video that this lens has picked up a few marks, scratches, dinks, dust, haze, fogging, blemishes, fungus, and everything in between. It's probably relatively easy to find a copy of this lens, but it's probably less easy to find a clean copy of this lens. If you're looking to buy this lens, do check the condition really carefully. If you can get a clean lens, hang on to it because they are such a great find. And just to recap, you don't need to use a vintage camera to use this vintage lens. You can, of course, use the correct adapter to use it on any camera, Leica or not Leica. Personally, my preferred setup is using it on the Leica M3 for film because the M3 has got the best viewfinder rangefinder. Using it on the Leica M240 for full frame to make the most of the kind of the bokeh. And then of course using it on Leica 3 cameras for a smaller setup. Something like my Leica 2F or Leica 3G. The 3G gives me a bigger viewfinder for those of you that don't like the, the tiny viewfinders that come on most of the Leica 3 cameras. So that is my rave review of the Leica Summitar 5cm f2 like a screw mount lens if you enjoyed this video as much as i enjoy this lens please hit the like button and feel free to subscribe if you like the type of content as always a big thanks to my patrons and see you back here in a few days bye